Okay, guys, so in this lesson, uh, I would like us to look at how we can find the first and second derivative of the function. So in finding the first derivative of the function, we already know what to do. So f prime of x is equal to, as you already know, this power here, 3, must multiply the coefficient here. So the coefficient here is 1. So it becomes 3x, and then you have to subtract 1 from the power. So 3 minus 1 will give us 2. Now, when we come to this part, we multiply this power by this coefficient here. It gives us minus 4. Then we subtract 1 from the power. So 2 minus 1 will give us 1. So it means 4 minus 4x to the power of 1. And then here... 1 is the power times minus 5 will give us minus 5. But now we have x to the power of 1. Now, the original power 1 minus 1 will give us 0. So x to the power of 0 will give us 1. So basically, x to the power of 0 gives us 1. So 1 times minus 5 gives us minus 5. As we can see, this is a constant. It doesn't have any variable or x per se attached to it so we already know that the derivative of a constant is zero so the derivative of six is zero so this is the first derivative of the function now if you want to find the second derivative we can equally put f prime prime of x then we say equal to then we take the power again that is the rule per se so the power times the coefficient here uh, so 2 times 3 will give us 6 and then x. Now we subtract 1 from the power. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So it means x has a power of 1, no longer 2. Now x has a power of 1. If we subtract 1 again, it will give us 0, meaning x to the power of 0 is 1. So we now have uh, the power 1 times minus 4, which gives us minus 4. Now, we subtract 1 from the power, which gives us 0, so x to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times minus 4 gives us minus 4. In this case, again, there is no variable or x attached to this minus 5. So, this minus 5 becomes a constant. Therefore, when we derive a constant, uh, the result is 0. So, the derivative of minus 5 is equal to 0. So, the second derivative of this function here is x 6x minus 4 and the first derivative of this function is 3x squared minus 4x minus 5 now why are we trying to look at uh, the first and second derivatives of a function they are very important because when you are dealing with a cubic graph you will need to consider uh, the turning point you also need to consider the point of inflection uh, we will talk more about that in the next lesson but what we can say now is that whenever you are looking for the x coordinate of the turning point you need to consider what i'm trying to explain here so these are the two things that we need to know when we're talking about first and second derivatives of a, a function in our next lesson we will look at how to determine the x coordinates of the turning points, the two turning points of the cubic graph, and also the x coordinates of the point of inflection. Mind you, when you are dealing with a cubic function or a cubic graph, there are two turning points originally of a normal uh, cubic graph. Though there are instances where you'd have some a bit of uh, funny sketches but the basic and normal cubic graph that we know has two turning points. And therefore, uh, when we look looking at the x coordinates of the turning point, we'll be looking for two x values of the two turning points or the x coordinates of the two turning points. And uh, once we have two turning points, basically we will have one point of inflection. 
You know, the point of inflection actually is equidistant between the two turning points. What I mean is that the distance between the two turning points of the cubic graph uh, has the point of uh, the point of inflection lying directly at the midpoint between the distance uh, that lies between the two turning points. So when you are moving from one turning point of a cubic, from a cubic graph to the second turning point, in between the journey, I mean equidistance or the midpoint of that distance, is where the point of inflection lies. But we will talk more about that in our le next lesson. Thank you.